Hello everyone, this is Husker Eurocat welcoming you to the 2024 off-season video as part of the New York Jets franchise on Madden 24 the PC. Unfortunately, the Jets went one and done in the playoffs this last season, but put up a valiant effort against the Kansas City Chiefs. And to be quite honest, I'm trying to figure out why the Jets weren't a much better team this last year, ending the 2023 campaign at 9-7 and, and backing into the playoffs. All we can do is hope for better things in 2024, and a lot depends on what happens here in the offseason. Things are going to be really interesting because in the last offseason, New York had to do some fancy maneuvering in order to make it under the salary cap and the 2024 offseason doesn't look any better and in some respects worse than a year ago. Now first though we have the end of the 2023 season to see about. We left off needing to know who wins Super Bowl 58 in New Orleans. It pitted the AFC champion Cleveland Browns against the NFC champion Dallas Cowboys. The Browns have never been to a Super Bowl and haven't won a championship since the 1964 Browns crushed the then Baltimore Colts 27 to nothing. But that was the NFL championship before the modern day Super Bowl era. The Cowboys though are looking for ring number six. It would be fitting if Dallas won in New Orleans because it was the site of their first Super Bowl win way back in 1971 at the then Tulane Stadium. And your winners by a landslide were the Dallas Cowboys. 35 to 10 was your final tally. Cleveland held Elliott in check throughout the first half, down 11 going into the break but then Dallas just pulled away in the final 30 minutes. A Mayfield pick and a Chubb fumble, and that was all for the Browns. They just couldn't come back from that. Now it's time for the yearly awards, starting with the MVP of the league. With 72% complete, just shy of 4,000 yards, and leading his Titans to a 12-4 playoff berth, we have Marcus Mariota. And <laughs> no, Sam Darnold didn't even come close to making this list. I was a little surprised about the winner of the Coach of the Year with Dan Quinn of the Titans getting the nod for that honor. Normally, it's at least a conference championship game coach or better than that that gets that honor, but not this year. Going to the AFC honors, first we have Marcus Mariota as Offensive Player of the Year. Not surprising. And no Jets make this list either. That doesn't really shock me since New York's offense wasn't very solid this season. The real fireworks were on the defensive side of the ball. Jamal Adams takes the Defensive Player of the Year award and now you see why the Jets chose to hang on to that talent when his contract came due. Blake Cashman and Marcus May join him on that list, so it seems that the defensive backfield improved a quite a bit this past year. Big question is, will the Jets be able to keep that trio together? The top offensive rookie of the AFC was Avery Mays from the Jags and Jojo McGee that scored a Chiefs touchdown in that wild card game against the Jets came in second place. With 55 solo tackles, the AFC Defensive Player of the Year was free safety Craig Mann from the Steelers. And here you see another Jet getting in on the action. Strong safety Jerron Mason that's playing back up to Jamal Adams with 41 solo tackles of his own ends up in fourth position on that list. Not bad for a backup I would have to say. Here's where the tables get turned just a bit. 
instead of Marcus Mariota winning quarterback of the year, Patrick Mahomes gets the hardware for the season. Kareem Hunt edges out Nick Chubb for the running back honor, and the Jets finally get in the offensive action with John Ross winning the best wide receiver award. Carl Arsenault makes the list at number 10, so I would be looking for some good things from him as well. Ronnie Staley wins best offensive lineman, and Michael Winkler made the list as well. It's just sad that the Jets may not be able to afford to keep him at that left guard position here in the offseason. Defensive lineman goes to Yannick Ngakwe. And Von Miller barely beats out Blake Cashman for linebacker of the year. At defensive back, you have Marcus May, Jamal Adams, and Brian Poole in the first three spots on the list. Rounding out the AFC is Daniel Carlson at kicker of the year. Well, now for the AFC award winners, you have Tony Adcock with a nice new $101 million contract to stay in Minnesota for the next six seasons that wins Offensive Player of the Year. Right end from the Rams, Aaron Donald wins Defensive Player of the Year. Offensive rookie goes to Brandon Bryant of the Packers and D-rookie goes to right end Myron Rice from the Bucks. Tony Adcock is your quarterback of the year. Todd Gurley beats out Ezekiel Elliott for the halfback spot. Unexpected. And Taylor Gabriel tops Stephon Diggs as the wide receiver of the year. And here is why the Cowboy offense was so good this season. The O-line was dominated by Dallas with Martin Smith and Frederick in the top five running to get that honor. Aaron Donald was Defensive Lineman of the Year, big surprise, followed by linebacker Khalil Mack from the Bears. Defensive back from the Saints, Marcus Williams and Robbie Gold from the 49ers as your kicker of the year. Next, who are some of the big names saying goodbye to the game? Antonio Brown, after a colorful end to his career, is saying goodbye after 14 seasons in the league. Middle linebacker Levante David. Right end Cameron Hayward. Quarterback Tyrod Taylor, after 13 seasons, say goodbye. Right guard Kevin Zeitler, Andy Dalton, and your AFC linebacker for the year, Von Miller, is saying so long after 13 years as well. And look at that. The Dolphins franchise tag fullback Kevin Young. Miami taking advantage of that outstanding talent that they got from the Jets practice squad a few seasons ago. Now the Jets came to the player re-signing period and right away New York is faced with superstar right outside linebacker Demarcus Faulkner. His rookie contract has run out and now he wants the big bucks. The Jets opted to pay him the money in order to keep that talent of his caliber, but he settled for a lot less than he wanted monetarily for some extra years on the end of his contract. So, New York signed a seven-year deal worth $35.6 million. If, in fact, he is as good as the Jets think he is, I could so see him being a holdout on day one. Some really good talent had to be let go to test free agency, so we can only hope in the long run that New York made the right decision. That meant that free agency was here and the Jets had no funds to acquire any talent at all. So they started to look first at cutting some players. Everyone that didn't incur a penalty was chopped. There was some really good talent in free agency, and Michael Winkler was just the tip of the iceberg. 
Left tackle Kyler Lynch was a good prospect if the Jets had any money to work with at all. But at this point, the Jets were looking for replacements in the O-line, and they had to watch as good talent went to other teams. So the decision was made that the trade block needed to be utilized. First on the block was defensive tackle Dexter Lawrence. The thought behind this was that the run defense was bad enough last season that Lawrence just wasn't getting it done for New York. They would be better unloading him to another team to try and pick up a good rookie starter in the NFL draft. So searching through the offers, no team was willing to give up something good this season. Only 5th and 7th round picks. And most teams were willing to part with a higher draft choice next season. Thus, the Jets settled on an offer from the Eagles that would give them a 2nd round pick next season and a 6th and 7th this season. That freed up a good chunk of salary cap. Just to see what he would bring next, New York put Sam Darnold on the trade block. The best offer they got was from the Steelers that offered a third and fifth round this season and a seventh round pick next season. With Nick Mullins gone and Darnold being the only quarterback on the roster, and pair that with the fact that this season's quarterback draft class was awful to say the least, I would imagine that it just wasn't going to happen. As a result of letting guys go and trading Lawrence, New York was in the black again, and with that secured two free agents that should help out their effort before the NFL draft. First was wide receiver Geo Cheeks that was signed to a one-year contract and brought some speed as well as some athleticism to the receiving crew. The other was cornerback Julian Love. With Brian Poole starting to regress, it was decided to find someone for the shorter term in free agency and go in other directions for the rookie draft. Love was signed to a three-year deal and with Mason growing in talent quickly, one wonders if he'll last the three years with the Jets. And now was the NFL draft. And with it, some holes needed to be filled. They still needed to fill the gap in the O-line. And with the loss of Lawrence, it came the need for help at the defensive tackle spot. There was Harvey Gabriel that's been waiting in the shadows to make his mark as a starter on this D-line. And he's going to get his chance. The Atlanta Falcons were the first on the clock and the first player taken was defensive tackle out of UNLV Robert Pierce at 78 overall. And with the departure of Nick Mullins, there was a need for at least a backup quarterback to be found in the draft. That was a tall order since the draft didn't have a lot to choose from at that spot. Since New York doesn't draft a player until the 21st pick, they see a lot of good players drafted by other teams. Like wide receiver Edwin Brown from Oklahoma in 80 overall, but it isn't until pick number 11 that the best player of the draft out of UCF at an 80 overall wide receiver Robert Barron is claimed. And now the Jets are finally on the clock, and after some deliberation, they go defense with defensive tackle Robert Williams. At a 75 overall, yet normal development, I would say that with the departure of Demarcus Lawrence, he may just be a starter come day one of the regular season. With their second round pick, the Jets select a wide receiver and that was Wesley Johnson out of Arkansas State. Only a 70 overall, but he's a fast one, and with some pretty impressive catching scores as well. I wonder if he'll be a candidate for the slot wide receiver position. And now New York's third pick 
made me scratch my head a little since I think they could have waited another round to select him if they wanted to. But left end Raymond Rivers was taken by the Jets and add an 85 for speed. <laughs> I would think that he would be a speed rusher instead of a power rusher. So time will tell with him. With their fourth round pick, the Jets take middle linebacker Christian Holloway. His combine makes him look like a beast. And speed and acceleration are excellent. But here again, I have to question taking him before they needed to. It looks like they could have waited another round at least. At this point, there isn't really any more good picks, so New York opts to trade out of their fifth round picks, which there were two. And in the sixth and seventh rounds, they grab both a kicker and a punter. The kicker, Trent Lyons, seems to have some potential with a hidden development trait. We'll have to see about the punter, Brad Olson, though. He has a good kick power score, so time will tell with him. The Jets got a couple of good rookies at the top of the draft, but this was anything but stellar. I have a feeling that that's why they went to the trade block again during this offseason. The need was seen for defensive line help, and New York put up both Nicole Hardman and Geo Cheeks and secured left-end Coco Sheffield. An 81 overall star developer that's only been in the league for a year. And nothing but up to go with this guy. They also gleaned some decent talent from the post-draft free agency, moved some personnel around a bit, and here is the final preseason roster. To back up Sam Darnold, they signed Toby Ramsey and a faster, elusive back in Malcolm Odom. At wide receiver, the hope is that second-round draft choice Wesley Johnson will be the starting return specialist to take over for Nicole Hardman. It'll be interesting to see how both Hardman and Cheeks fit into the Titans scheme since they'll play these guys in the first preseason game. Tight ends stay the same as last season, although I don't think that Darnold utilized them near enough as targets for the passing game. When it comes to the O-line, I feel it's stronger than it has been in years. I'm just hoping that some holes can be open for the running attack. On the D-line, the addition of Sheffield should be impactful for a long time and moving Leonard Williams to defensive tackle not only gave him a better overall, but it still leaves Gabriel with a starting role in this 4-3, cover three defensive scheme they've got going. Probably the weakest part of the defense will be the corners. Ramirez is on the way up, but Brian Poole has lost some talent to regression Let's hope that between Julian Love and Justin Lane, they'll be able to handle the other side of the field. With the linebackers, Ja'Kai Polite is finally going to get a starting role since Avery Williamson has regressed significantly. And second-year man out of Vandy, Demarcus Faulkner, is going to get the nod at right outside linebacker. The safeties remain the same with May and Adams, and the star developer, Jerron Mason, who qualified as Defensive Rookie of the Year he is last season, well, he is going to be the backup to those guys. A pretty big question marks will be the kicker and punter, since both are rookies being given a shot here on the Jets squad. I don't see this as being an easy preseason with three of the four teams being at the top of their game a season ago. We just need to see if they were able to keep those squads intact through the offseason. That'll do it for our presentation of the 2024 Jets offseason. Next, we'll see the 2024 preseason and again... I'm going to try to fit all four games into one episode 
so we can get through the preseason and into the games that really make a difference when it comes to the postseason. The Jets backed into the playoffs, and while they made it to the postseason, they went one and done, losing to the Chiefs in KC. Will the newly drafted talent prove that they can make the grade, or will the skill of the experienced free agents take control in the preseason? New York has picked up some good talent via the trade block, but will they be able to make an impact? Be with us as we find out as the Jets try to make a sweep of the preseason schedule. Until I see you back at MetLife Stadium to start the preseason against the Titans, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now, and have a good day, everyone.